The Earth is a water planet, but global water resources are under attack. From dead zones to acidic oceans and rising seas to vanishing aquifers, our water planet is changing in ways that threaten us all. The good news is solutions exist, and Earth Echo is on a mission to find them. I'm Philippe Cousteau. Join me as we explore the effects of acidifying oceans on Earth Echo Expedition's Shell Shock. We're here in Seattle at NOAA's Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory, and we're really lucky because we get to meet the director, Chris Sabine, and get a sneak peek behind the scenes look at some of the important ocean acidification research that's happening here. Chris, tell me where we are and what's happening here. We got wires everywhere. This is really a fantastic laboratory. This is the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory Ocean Acidification Lab. And what kind of work are you doing? So we, we measure ocean acidification. We measure the carbon parameters in the ocean that help us to understand how the carbon system is changing. And so the ocean acidification, big, long, kind of wonky word. In a nutshell, tell me what it means. We know that carbon dioxide is rising in the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels, deforestation, other human activities. Well, it turns out that about a quarter to a third of that carbon dioxide is being absorbed by the oceans. CO2 is what we call an acid gas. It reacts with the water molecules in the ocean to form carbonic acid, hence ocean acidification. And that has uh, consequences for marine ecosystems that we're trying to understand. So we've evolved with the oceans in a particular state, and that state is changing and that has some potentially very serious negative consequences for exactly. humanity. Exactly. We're changing the oceans at a rate that's 50 to 100 times faster than we've ever seen in the past. We're adding, we're adding about 22 million tons of carbon dioxide to the oceans every single day, day in, day out. We've been adding CO2 for 200 years. So those that say, oh, the oceans are huge, you know, we can't be making an impact. That's what we've shown now with our measurements, making, taking these instruments and actually measuring in the ocean the changes that develop. So what kind of things are you, are you researching? I'm seeing lots of tubes and wires and hoses and copper. What right. are we particularly testing here? So as I mentioned, when we first started this, we were looking at how much CO2 the oceans are taking up. That's what these instruments do. So we can put these things out on a buoy, deploy them for a year, a year and a half, and they'll measure the CO2 in the air and the water, and from that we can see how much CO2 the oceans are actually absorbing. So that's when so we that's started bringing in these other okay. instruments. So this, this is an instrument that we can buy commercially to measure the pH of the oceans uh, on buoys, and they're expensive. They cost twenty to $30,000, wow. so we can only afford to put a few of them out. What we're looking for are instruments that we can uh, that are cheap and robust and accurate that we can just deploy all over the place and to not get that kind of baseline data that's so important to understand where we where we are and how it's shifting exactly. so that we can begin to respond and understand the consequences of those shifts. Exactly. Excellent. Well, Chris, thank you for everything that you're doing here. My this guy's a rock star. We are very lucky to have him. Uh, we really appreciate it because you're helping us understand and peel back the layers of mystery that exists in our oceans and in this world. And um, there's hope still. Producing a device that can measure the pH across the ocean, as Chris said, is so desperately needed, is what the Ocean Health X Prize is all about. I caught up with Paul Bungie, a senior scientist with the X Prize Foundation, to learn more about the Wendy Schmidt Ocean Health X Prize. So excited about everything that's happening here with the X Prize. Give me a context of X Prize. Why ocean acidification? Why is X Prize engaging in this program in so, particular? So X Prize is all about incentivizing radical breakthroughs for the benefit of humanity. We're, we're looking at ocean acidification because the chemistry of the water affects the chemistry of the creatures that are in there, and that includes, you know, the, the phytoplankton that make oxygen for us. Right? It includes everything. It also, you know, oysters we eat. Uh, well, that chemistry is very similar to the chemistry in our bodies, right? We, you know. Animals came originally from the sea, right? We, we have the same or similar chemistry. What happens in human if pH lowers down is a condition called acidosis. Quite literally, this puts you, you know, this is your, your blood becoming acidic and it can kill you. 
And in fact, if it changes by the amount that we've already seen the world's oceans change, if your blood changed by that much, you'd be in the hospital on life support on, on your deathbed, basically, this acidosis, right? And so that's what we've seen already in the last 150 years in the oceans, just based on the, the simple measurements that we've been able to take, right? Ocean acidification, a lot of scientists have, have sort of sounded the alarm bell that that's one of the largest threats to ocean health that the planet's really ever seen. So we, we jumped in. This is a, a grand challenge that everybody on the planet needs to respond to. So what we do is we set up a competition that says, how can we solve this problem, ocean acidification? And using all of the, the world's best experts on the subject, it was clear that the one thing missing, the sort of first step you need to do, is to get the kind of tools that can measure what's actually happening. In other words, we didn't, it would be like having a fever, uh, but you don't have a thermometer to even know how high, right? And so literally we needed the thermometer for ocean health. And so that's what the competition is all about. If you want to solve ocean acidification, you got to be able to measure. You can't solve what you don't measure. Uh, so we got to put them through their faces. This is an X prize, which means that you got to be like the best technology. Rigorous. It's rigorous. It's yeah. hard, right? This is not, this is $2 million. You can't, you don't just give that away. That means you need to produce a device that can measure the pH in every part of the oceans that are relevant. Producing a device like this for XPRIZE has drawn scientists from around the world to compete. One of those scientists, Will Barrow of Team A and B Sensors, gave us a closer look at their instrument. Tell me a little bit about what you're here to do and why you were inspired to actually enter the XPRIZE competition and participate in, in this program. Okay, well, we're here to win the XPRIZE competition. Uh, we just thought that we had this technology, and we already had it before the competition. It was sitting on a shelf as such, and we thought it needs to get out there. We need to bring it into a, a, an environmentally friendly use. I'm curious, throughout the design process, what kind of challenges or unexpected uh, hurdles did you have to overcome? Um, it was mainly to do with the electronics, to get them into that low power consumption bracket. Uh, we, I told you we only had a month to test it, so obviously we didn't have time to test it, to do trials, um, to determine if the battery would last. You're proof that this is very much an international competition. I hear the accent from the UK, <laughs> yeah. uh, from Cambridge, I believe. Yeah, from Cambridge. And, um, and you mentioned that, that this is kind of research that you've already been engaging in. So yeah. when this opportunity came, why not engage in it? You mentioned this is an important issue, ocean acidification. Why to you does this matter? Looking after the oceans is a top priority. It's part of the ecosystem that sustains our life. So, yeah, of course it's crucially important. The Ocean Health X Prize competition has already generated 10 brand new technology tools to support research around ocean pH. The X Prize has attracted career chemists, engineers, and oceanographers, as well as high school students and food and oil industry professionals. This type of collaboration makes me hopeful even in the face of such a massive global challenge. Paul, we were talking earlier about something that I think is really important for people to remember. When they feel hopeless about some of these large global problems, there are ways to ensure that the oceans can be resilient. That's totally right. I mean, this is, this is what scientists refer to as multiple stressors, right? I and mean, then you could imagine, right? If you got sick and you had, uh, you know, you had a cold and then you, you cut yourself really badly and then you got meningitis and then you got, you know, all that, add that all up, you know, you're going to be in bad shape. This is what we're doing to the ocean. Pollution, uh, warming, we've got overfishing, we're doing habitat destruction, and now the, the, they're acidifying. All of that can be too much to handle. But you're absolutely right. On a local level, we can start to protect those things, right? We don't, we don't need to, to destroy reefs in the neighborhood. We don't need to, to pollute what's, uh, what's in your backyard necessarily. And what's, what's, here's what's amazing, right? This is what I love about, about life, right? And life in the oceans is life wants to survive. It's, it can be resilient. We need to just give it that opportunity. To learn more about ocean acidification and find ways to take action in your community, visit Earth Echo International at www.earthecho.org.